Remember when you're talking about 3D space, so Euclidean space, which is described by the basis vectors of the basis states i hat, j hat, and k hat. Well, we know that an arbitrary vector in that particular space is given by this, this kind of nomenclature, this a with an underline or an a with a line on top or something like that, maybe even a, maybe even a tilde. In quantum mechanics, we use this symbol here to represent a vector, and that's called a ket. So we can call it a ket, or an eigenket, or a quantum state vector, or an abstract quantum state vector, an eigenstate of the operator, or a quantum state, and so on. There are loads of different ways of saying the same thing in quantum mechanics, and that makes it kind of difficult sometimes. I like abstract quantum state, and I like ket. And the reason I like to say to be to be clear and say it's abstract is because with the vector a it is a real you know it has real magnitude and direction whereas quantum states aren't necessarily real they can be complex so I want to I want to highlight the fact that they're more abstract than your regular vectors now what happens if you have an abstract quantum state and you want to find the value of an observable such as position or energy or momentum well you need the associated operator so we start out with our abstract quantum state or our ket and we operate on it with an operator and that produces an eigenvalue equation. Now the language here is very important. We say that the eigen excuse me the eigenstate or the ket is an eigenstate of the operator. We specifically refer back to the operator and this is an eigenvalue of the operator. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about here I suggest you look at my video where I discuss the language of eigenvalue equations. Here is the time independent Schrodinger equation or the energy eigenvalue equation. And I suggest that you pause the video just to make sure that you understand the language I'm using here. Three of the most common eigenvalue equations in quantum mechanics are those of energy, of momentum, and position. And we're going to be talking a lot about the position eigenvalue equation. So I strongly suggest that you pause the video here just to make sure you know the language that I'm using and the symbols I am using. Now, what happens if we have an arbitrary abstract quantum state? Let's call it ket psi. And ket psi isn't already in an eigenstate of a particular operator. So let's say we want to va value the, excuse me, we want to evaluate the value of an observable associated with a particular operator A. But that ket psi is not already in an eigenstate of A. Well, the ket or the abstract quantum state is going to collapse or project into an eigenstate of the operator. So, as is seen in the bottom left of your screen, if you want to measure the momentum of an arbitrary abstract quantum state, which is not already in an eigenstate of momentum, then it's going to collapse into an eigenstate of momentum, giving you the momentum eigenvalue equation and allowing you to measure the momentum. So to say that again, The following is what happens when we apply an, uh, an operator to value to measure the value of an observable. So we start with an arbitrary abstract quantum state or a ket, which doesn't have a definite value of a particular observable. We seek the value of a particular observable associated with a particular operator. The observable is the eigenvalue of the operator. So we get the quantum operator, which happens to be Hermitian, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Now let's say that the arbitrary ket is not already in an eigenstate of the operator. And if that's the case, it must collapse or project into an eigenstate of the particular operator. And this will produce an eigenvalue equation, allowing us to, to measure the value of the eigenvalue, which is our observable. 